I have been recording this video for like six minutes and then I found that I haven't pressed the recording key. Uh, recording key. And then I'm talking about keys. Okay, so anyway, disappointments do happen all the time. Welcome again to the new video of chapter 6. We will talk about the 6.3 types of the Wi Fi networks and 6.4, the, some of the Wi Fi terms that you will hear in the Wi Fi world. Starting with Wi Fi types or Wi Fi network types, we have three types that you will see the infrastructure type 2 in like 80% of time. The mesh type 3 is like in 15 or 18 percent of the time, maybe like 1 percent or 5 up to 5 percent for this type, which is the ad hoc, and you might never see it or work with it in your life. But there is some type of network that's called ad hoc. Ad hoc is where you have to connect two stations in a point to point connection with the absence of access points. That happens when you have like one laptop that you need to connect to another laptop wirelessly between them when there is no access point at all this is an offline connection this is the absence of access point there is no internet there's no connection to connectivity direct connectivity or nothing that allows you to be involved in the network but you have like one laptop that you need to send some information to another laptop or exchange some data between two laptops wirelessly this is called the ad hoc uh, Actually, I haven't searched that, but I think Bluetooth can be involved as an ad hoc example because I can I can have like two stations like a mobile phone and a laptop or two laptops that they do send information between them using Bluetooth and that's a wireless connection and that's it requires no access point. But I have no idea because Bluetooth do use the 2.4 gigahertz channels and this is considered to be Wi-Fi channels so I think Bluetooth is considered as an ad hoc we need I need to search furthermore about that the other type is like just like I've talked about in the previous video which is the infrastructure and the infrastructure is all about having an access point between stations so I have like one two up to hundred access point no matter the number but what I have the one common rule that everyone in my network is using is that I have an access point that the stations are connecting to this access point as their first gateway and also stations do talk and communicate together through the access point not directly so access point is the guy is the champion here that everything is upon his responsibility the third type this is the most thing that you will use and see in wireless network the third type is the mesh and this is having access point talking together wirelessly not stations talking together wirelessly this is about having an access point like uh, I have two rooms, room A, room 1, and room 2. In room 1, there is an access point that have a direct connectivity back to the switch. And that's it. It's working. It's operating. It's giving internet and network broadcasting and everything. But for some reasons, this guy here, this other access point in the other room, I cannot connect a wire from it to the switch. I can't connect a wire from it to the other access point for multiple reasons. Even if this access point has two Ethernet ports available, most of them have only one port. But just in case it had, for other th for some reasons, I cannot extend the cable from this access point to the other one. The only thing or the only scenario that I can operate and make use of this access point is by making to making it to operate wirelessly. So yes, using the mesh connection, I can operate a wireless connectivity between access point 1 and 2 and make this guy works as an extender for access point 1. Okay, this is just like the extenders available in the market that you buy and go back home and you inject it in the wireless or the, I'm sorry, in the electricity socket in the wall and connect it wirelessly to your home router so that it would cover even a bigger radius or big, uh, bigger coverage area so this example of having a mesh connection between two access points connected together wirelessly probably most of you or some of you have done it already in their homes for the need of extending the coverage area so those are the three types of wireless I'm sorry, of Wi-Fi networks, ad hoc infrastructure and mesh. And now we will talk about some Wi-Fi terms.
and those are simple terms if you have configured like a home router before you have heard like a lot of them or some of them or if you have some work or experience before in wireless networks then you definitely know some of them or even all of them so those terms term number one will be the basic service set the BSS what we mean by BSS it's about only a single access point and this coverage area that's it so when you say like BSS number one so what's BSS number one well actually BSS number one is access point number one that it's installed in floor number one in my house and it's covering the entire ground floor number one entire floor number one with all the wireless devices in it so that is the BSS it's a section where it has an access point stations coverage area and that's it this is BSS number one BSS number two will be like in ground in floor number two that it has another dedicated access point some other stations connecting to using like some different frequencies and channels and we will talk in detail about frequencies and channels in the upcoming videos but this is the term or this is what a BSS defines basic service set BSS ID the BSS ID the BSS identifies the MAC address of that access point that is responsible of such BSS that should be simple service set ID which is the SSID it's the name of the wireless network that's being broadcasted through this BSS or I'm sorry through this access point or BSS the same thing and this is the SSID that when you use your mobile phone or laptop you search for some is there some Wi-Fi networks in here how do you know that you do search using your mobile phone or laptop and you'll see some names of networks that's it those are SSIDs okay let me kind of broadcast some of you like I will can show those guys in here okay okay anyway those guys in here all of those are SSIDs that I can connect to okay so that's it those are the SSIDs and who defines this as a SSID the access point the BSS so in floor number one there's a BSS uh, the BSS that is broadcasting network using the SSID of floor one free Wi-Fi this is the SSID next we have the distribution system which is the wired network that connects the access point to the LAN this is, should be easy because just in this video in the previous video I have talked about the scenario that you will always have your access points connected to either an access point that will go back to a switch or will be directly connected to a switch so this switch is this distribution system that's taking your access point and it's connecting back to the wired network where there are multiple switches and routers beyond this is the DS extended service set ESS is a collection of access point all of them connected to the same switch to the same distribution system all of them offering the same wireless LAN and SSID like hotels and hotspot and hospitals so this should be common thing that most of us have dealt with just in case we haven't this is when you go to a hotel and the single floor of one hotel of the hotel one the one floor the each floor of in this hotel is so large in area that it requires like five six or ten access points in it all of the but what you do when you first go to this floor or this hospital or this hotspot net internet free internet in a cafe or a restaurant is that you do connect only one time to the SSID and it doesn't matter how much you move or you change your place in this hospital or hotel or restaurant your phone is always connected this is not because of one big giant access point that does cover like 500 meter of radius not at all this is of multiple access points in the hotel this is the top view of the floor number one let us have all of those access point inside it all of them are connecting back to the same switch which is the DS here the distribution system all of them are using the same VLAN VLAN number five maybe okay to take the connectivity from this switch and be involved in the network and all of them are broadcasting using the same SSID and passphrase. SSID is the name of the network, 
passphrase is the password that you should enter to get connected to this network so what you happen is that you move from point a to point b to point c d e f g h etc you always have internet connectivity it doesn't disconnect your mobile is changing its connection from one ap to the other you have no idea because all of those access points are working using are operating by broadcasting the same wlan it's using the same ssid and all of them are connected back to the same distribution system the ds or the same network so one single network is binding all of those guys together all of those access points together and of course you can assign one wlc one wireless controller to this switch you can connect it to this switch and you can select all of them establish them operate them from this device assign this wlan this ssid this vlan and this password all of inside from this one hit apply the five of those guys will reboot will start operating using the same config all of them typically that your mobile phone will connect to any one of them and get the same result whenever you move okay so this is all about mobility so that's it that should be enough for this video in the upcoming video we'll start the new subject which is the wi-fi channels and I will need big efforts to describe and interpret and discuss what's happening here. I hope to be lucky enough to transform the idea to you. I'm sorry to transport the idea of channels and frequencies inside the channels to you. But just before channels, if this one previous video which was all about the types and the terms was clear, we can pass to the channels just in case it wasn't. You can comment down below in the video. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe it, maybe, because I can see 60% of my followers are not subscribers. Subscribing is for you, so that you can receive the new notifications that Chapter 6 is now available, Chapter 7 is now available, exam reviews, exam questions, some challenge labs, or some mega labs, etc., some other things that I'm doing in the future, some new courses are available, so it's for you to know the news okay so you can subscribe the channel you can like the video of course you can comment down below for whatever you have question or any comment you can leave it below and in the upcoming video we'll start talking about the wi-fi channel so thanks for watching and you'll see you in the upcoming video goodbye